Um, I think that here's the thing. I think books, television, film, they're all different mediums and they require different things. Um, when I read the books, I fell in love with these characters. I fell in love with the town of Midnight. I, we learn, every episode, you'll learn about a new character. So episode two, you'll learn about the Rev and why he's freaked out by the full moon. And so I think that what we do is take one episode to sort of unpack each character. So episode three, you'll learn about Lem, and Lem is a very untraditional vampire. He both can have blood, he also um, feeds, leeches emotion, leeches energy. And we learn how that came to be for Lem. So I think we try and sort of explore why there are different versions of this. Um, does that answer your question? I'm sorry, I floundered there by the end. But yes. <laughs> Things, and one of the reasons why I wanted to develop this for NBC is when you read the books, it's about community and love. True Blood was always about desire, sex, and blood. Like, it really was. That was the theme from that first frame where they come in with the blood. Like, that's the... And so we're dealing with a different theme. So when I read the books, I was like, this is a theme that fits perfectly on network. Like, we don't have to shortchange the story because when you read the books, it's not as if they're very violent or very sexually explicit because it's not exactly the metaphor it's trading on either. It doesn't mean that our characters don't have sex and there's a lot of desire and there's a surprising amount of violence that I'm surprised we got away with. But it's not in the same vein as True Blood because... It's not the same metaphor we're operating under. Because I, I did, when I read the books, when I first got the books, I was like, well, can you even do a Charlene Harris thing on network? But when I read it, I'm like, there's absolutely no reason you can't do this book on network. There's nothing in the books that is saying to me. And, you know, we push the envelope as much as we can, and I've been really grateful that the network and the studio have been supportive. But they're also the network that put on Hannibal for many years. So it's like they have pushed the envelope before and I think they're letting us do a little bit of that now. Um, <laughs> Mr. Snuggly, because it's so time consuming and expensive. <laughs> but, but, yeah. but he had to be in. He had to be in. Like it would have been weird. Uh, that's what, it's part of what makes this book series different than True Blood, that it is, there's a whimsical quality to this world also, and a, a wish fulfillment to this world. It's like, after I read the books, I'm like, I want to live in midnight. I want to be able to go to Fiji store. Um, so I think that, n not really, I mean, it's, it's been a real experience because also we've adapted some of the characters for the people we cast. So Fiji's backstory is a little different than the Fiji in the book. And Lem's backstory is a little different. But also, I tried to keep similar things. So Lem in the book, who was a, a sort of uh, golem like white character, we, uh, he uh, came from Texas. He was an old Texan. So we, you know, when we explored Lem's backstory, we kept him an old Texan. But his backstory would look very different considering... Peter Mensa versus in the book. So we tried to sort of keep the heart and then adapt accordingly to um, who we cast and how we were evolving the stories. Huh. Because I feel like it's hard for me to say because they're all such vital parts of the community. I feel like Fiji's the kindest. So to speak to heart, I think Fiji's the one that everyone loves who doesn't have a mean bone in her body, who everyone can support, and is like just the best of everyone. Um, and, you know, I think all our characters change over the course of the season, so yeah, it does change, but, you know, um, I don't want to give anything away, so I won't tell you how. Well, well, it's on a veil, and, and Fiji talked about it being on a veil between the living and the dead. We learn more about that veil in episode two, and we learn that that veil is porous, that that veil is fraying. And so into this delightful little community of a found tribe where they're sort of left alone to be themselves, all hell is going to break loose. And for people who just kind of want to be left alone, they're going to have to decide, do we act? Do we act? 
do we help things? Do we leave? Like, we could leave. We could all just disappear. So, it, um, so the town itself becomes integral to the story. Um, you know, she, come, she came to set. I've talked to her, but I mean, it's funny. When I first met her, she's like, look, I've been through this on True Blood. This is your show. I have my books. And she understands it. And so she's been super supportive. We send her every script. Um, but in terms of, I have a wonderful group of writers who all read the books, and then we sort of just took it from there. Yeah, no, I feel like for me, the living, because Manfred sees the dead, they're like us as humans. Harold is petty and mean and upset his wife is moving on. Zilda's protective of her grandson. Like, people are, who, their souls are who they are. They're just, unfortunately for Manfred, in the body that died. But I think that, you know, one of the things that was important to me is that our ghosts aren't just spooky because we live in a world of monsters. Our vampires aren't the scary ones. Our witches aren't the scary ones. So our ghosts shouldn't be the exclusive scary ones. Some ghosts are awful, but some are kind. And some are just lonely. And, you know, um, Aubrey just wanted help. And what I love is playing with that trope of, holy shit, there's a ghost. But it's a sad lady who just wants some help. So I yeah, like upsetting the expectations of what you think a ghost is going to be versus what it is. And for Manfred, ghosts are all things. That was a feat of, of movie magic. First of all, we had to build a room that could sustain that amount of water. So it had to be waterproof. Um, Shannon, our actor, it was, she was in a fat suit and then the dead fat, the dead body overlaid in, on it because, you know, if a body's been in water for that long, it would, you know, so we're trying to be realistic <laughs> and among our dead. Um, and then there was a tube connected to a tank. So there's literally a man following her with a tube with a wire that goes in through the prosthetic and dripping water. And then we had to CG all that out. So it was... A, it was a lot. It was a lot, but she, she was amazing. And yeah. you got so much sadness in her dead eyes. Like, you felt for the dead girl, which yeah. was important to me, that it's not just a body, that there's a story behind that body. Because for Manfred, those are the people he talks to. Yes. Yeah. You want to help her. And I think one of the things that's in Charlene's book that we try really hard is every character in Midnight has been evil at some point or bad. And human beings can change, and people can change, and no one is, begins and ends in that one event. And so these are characters who are looking for redemption, and we'll learn that all their histories aren't great, but they've changed. And so it's important to always, like for us to always just not characterize people as villains or good, but where are they in the desire to be different or to be good or to be human? Right. Thank, you. Well, thank you so much.